An interesting thing, a difficult question to approach is to understand the level of secrecy uh, in Newton's publication strategies, if you like. So we have seen that Newton, from the very beginning, from 1669, has nothing to hide about infinite series. He is very open about that. Well, James Gregory had obtained the same results, and uh, other mathematicians were on the market uh, doing these things, so there was no reason why he should have uh, kept infinite series hidden from sight. Then we find him uh, revealing something about the method of fluxions in the second epistola. So in the epistola, uh, in the second epistola, uh, Newton reveals many of his results but keeps the method, the direct method of uh, fluxions hidden, the method that allows you to calculate the tangent to a curve, so to speak. But there is something that Newton is very jealous about, and it is his techniques of quadrature. Newton gives a great importance to these techniques. And uh, in, in the De Methodis, if you read uh, at the end of the De Methodis, Newton added two tables of curves that can be squared. And these two tables are uh, achieved via techniques that uh, go beyond the use of infinite series. Let me explain this. You can square a curve, you can calculate a curvilinear, the area of a curvilinear surface, by means of infinite series. This is what Newton does in the De Analysi. But in a subsequent treatise that he wrote, the De Methodis Serierum et Fluxionum, on the methods of series and fluxions, that was completed in 1671, Newton deploys higher techniques of quadrature. One is based on the fundamental theorem. That is, is based on the inverse relationship between differentiation and integration. So, what Newton does is the following. I have to square a certain list of curves. What I do is that I try to find curves such that the first curves are the tangent curves of the second curves, so to speak. So I have a column, I have another column, and here I have the equation of curves, here I have the equation of other curves, and if I, in Leibnizian terms, differentiate the second curves, I obtain the first curves, so to speak. And this means that the second curves are represent the area of the first curves. So I use the easier algorithm, the direct algorithm of fluxions, as a way to solve the more difficult problem, the problem of finding the area. What I do is so simple, and Newton immediately realizes it when he uh, deals with the fundamental theorem in his uh, early works of 1665. When Newton proved the fundamental theorem, for him the fundamental theorem was not only a nice relationship between two curves, it was an open door to perform quadratures. I pick up the equations of many curves, I calculate the tangents of these curves, and I obtained other equations of curves such that the first curves are the area of the second curves. So that's a, a, a technique that Newton develops in the De Methodis. Another technique of integration of quadrature that Newton develops in the De Methodis is integration by substitution of variables. I have a difficult equation, but I can substitute the variables of 
um, the abscissa of the curve in such a way that I transform these difficult curves into the equation of a conic section. And I know from the De Analisi how to calculate the areas subtended by conic sections. So I reduce difficult curves to the quadrature of conic sections. This is a technique that Newton developed in the De Methodis. And this was, you know, as he wrote to Collins, the secret fountain by means of which I can achieve important results. So I would say that uh, where Newton was very secretive in the 1670s was about these higher quadrature techniques which were not based on the power series expansions of the De Analisi but were based on higher quadrature techniques that is integration via anti-differentiation as some times uh, it is called, and integrations by substitution and by parts. Um, Newton developed these techniques and uh, didn't want to reveal them. But continental and British mathematicians did not stay, were not sleeping, so to speak. They were doing new things. John Craig, a Scott mathematician, began developing an interest in quadratures and wrote a book in 1685 written in Leibnizian notation on integration, as a matter of fact. David Gregory came to know what Newton was doing via John Craig and uh, published as his own one of these uh, difficult theorem on uh, quadratures that uh, Newton was so uh, interested in. Leibniz on the continent in the 1690s was writing papers in the Acta Eruditorum in which he was advancing the integral calculus on techniques that are very similar to Newton's techniques. Therefore, Newton had to change his publication strategy and began to print his calculus of fluxions by means of Wallace's works. We have to look at the correspondence between Collins and Wallace. Wallace knows that Newton has written these two letters to Leibniz and wants them. He wants to see them. I have the feeling that Collins is somewhat reluctant to leave Wallace obtain these two letters. Perhaps because of Wallace's um, uh, fame of stealing things and claiming for himself works written by others. But in the end, uh, Wallace is able to put his hands on both letters. And uh, in a big book printed in 1685, his English algebra, he prints a paraphrase of the first epistola, of the first letter. This means that he prints the binomial theorem. Um, this means that he prints the results of the De Analisi. Later on, Wallace in 1693 published a, a big folio in Latin of his works, and in this big folio he paraphrases again the first letter to Leibniz and parts of the second letter to Leibniz. And it is in 1693 that we find uh, a first publication of many mathematical results by Newton. Wallace 
in this context, in the context of the publication of uh, the second volume of his opera in 1693, wrote to Newton asking more details, asking uh, more details about uh, the method that allowed Newton to calculate tangents, about the direct method. And Newton wrote uh, to Wallace, uh, sending him uh, information about his notation, his new dotted notation for fluxions, and uh, the first publication in print of Newton's fluxional method occurs in 1693 under the pressure of, uh, of the fact that both in Britain and on the continent mathematicians were obtaining important results and Newton had to uh, claim for himself his uh, his uh, discoveries. Now you might ask me, but if Collins had convinced Newton to print the De Analisi or perhaps even the De Methodis, because there were, uh, it seems from the correspondence that even the purpose of printing the De Methodis was considered, even though it is not clear. But if Newton had published these two early treatises that are very well written when you read the manuscript, they are written in a very good hand, they are very well, uh, you know, they're very well organized, even though the, 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 the method is not complete, but, uh, you know, they are ready for the printer. Now, if Newton had printed this work in 1672, what would have happened? to him and to the history of mathematics, it would have been a different history. 